G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, well before we sort of get into too much, I'm guessing that Berlin hard fork didn't work oh so well because gas fees at the moment are ridiculous again. This is really disappointing because I, I was really hopeful that this meant, you know, gas fees were going to stay down, but no, nah, didn't work. 181, basically impossible for anyone who's not you know, super wealthy to use Ethereum again. So very dis uh, disappointing. But anyway, it is what it is. So let's move on. Market cap is up 3.4% and people are just piling into uh, the altcoins at the moment. But Bitcoin is starting to make a little bit of a move. So we'll just keep an eye on that. So look, two and a half trillion dollars now. Two and a half trillion dollars, up 3.4%. Now we're still waiting for tomorrow. So it's Sunday here in Australia, but it's not Sunday over in the States yet. And we'll see whether there's that, you know, typical Sunday sort of retracement. BTC dominance now under 43%, only just, but still. ETH dominance absolutely rising and ETH is flying at the moment. And as I said, gas fees, that's, yeah, again, I'd really hoped that, you know, that Berlin hard fork uh, was going to, you know, keep gas fees low, but not, nah, and I think they're going to continue to go higher, unfortunately. So Ethereum, again, out of play for, you know, anyone who's not super rich. And yeah, Ethereum 2.0 can't come quick enough. All right, though, we can see, look, it's just a sea of green at the moment, really, like things are just generally doing really, really well. What's done really well in the top 100 in the last 24 hours, the last seven days, I mean, crazy stuff, Ethereum Classic, you know, nearly 212, just over 250%. So what's done well in the last 24 hours? Bitcoin Diamond, God, yeah, that's how you know this market's starting to get crazy. There's nothing going on in Bitcoin Diamond. It is literally basically a dead coin and it's pumped up so much and people are going to get wrecked. Uh, that is, you know, my personal opinion. I can't offer financial advice, but people are going to get oh so wrecked in these coins. I mean, people get wrecked in all coins, but yeah, there's going to be a lot of people FOMOing into that uh, and get really, really wrecked. <laughs> all right, so 53% for Bitcoin Diamond, you know, nearly 19% for Horizon, Venus, 1-inch, Ethereum. So, I mean, on an absolute tear at the moment, doing extremely well. Uh, Lido, Staker, ETH, never heard of it. Uh, C, ETH, Compound, Ethereum Classic, Maker, Polygon, nice, up 10.9%. It's still, 89 cents was its highest, so it's still under its highest. Phantom Network, look, a number of things have done, you know, pretty well and some really good gains. Again, for me, anything above 15% in 24 hours is a good gain. Has there been anything that hasn't done so well? Has anything got really wrecked in the last 24 hours? No, not really. Dogecoin down a little bit, but look, fair enough, it was always going to happen. You know, nothing can just continue to go up forever. It doesn't matter what coin it is, Bitcoin, Ethereum, anything, it will eventually have a retracement. Uh, but look, 7.9% and you're still up basically nearly 90% in seven days. I don't think you're too worried about that. Pirate chain far out. Uh, XDC, Telecoin, look, hardly any losses really. One coin, you know, well, two coins are, you know, around 8% and then, you know, everything is sort of kind of 5% and under and a lot of 1, 2, 3% losses. So really, the losses are very, very minimal. All right, let's go have a look at the charts. So some things I wanted to have a look at. So a coin that I've been into for a while, a secret network token. And we can see, look, it found its bottom and now it's starting to make its way back up. It pumped up, came down, it pumped up, came down, it pumped up and came down. But it looks like it's just kind of in a ranging motion at the, a ranging, yeah, motion at the moment. Still a little bit volatile, but it really does seem like this is kind of the bottom and as long as it travels sideways and isn't just you know continually dumping off it usually means it's kind of forming a base not always but quite often so again had its peak its blow off peak came down found its bottom some old support and resistance pumped up had a bit of a blow off again pumped up and it's just i get the feeling like it's going to keep going sideways and getting it'll it's getting ready for something you know fairly big the next move up is again look at where it's been before it's not even broken all-time highs now this is against 
Bitcoin. This isn't against the dollar. Its dollar value has continued to go up. I think it's at about $3 now. But we just got to bring this down and then have a look where it's where it's been before. So uh, Secret Network Token is sort of a fork from Enigma. And once upon a time, Enigma was worth about $8, I think. Uh, and that was back when Bitcoin was only worth, you know, twenty thousand dollars so considering bitcoin's worth sixty thousand dollars now and this is only worth three it says the kind of you know value that it could take so here we go so again even though it's you know doing all right it's really just coming back and testing some old sort of you know support resistance levels look how much higher it could go now i'm not saying it's going to get here again but i do think it can get sort of somewhere in and about here against bitcoin and if Bitcoin ends up getting to 100,000, 150,000, 300,000, whatever it may be, imagine how much this is going to be worth if it can just sort of get up to around about here, you know, 32,296 Satoshis. And currently it's sitting at 5,723 Satoshis. So secret network. This is something I'm buying into at the moment, even though I'm not saying it couldn't go a little bit lower. Uh, I like the project, I like everything they're doing, and it's just well down against Bitcoin at the moment. All right, ETH, let's have a look. ETH BTC. Look, we've had this, you know, great rally at the moment, and I know a lot of people are getting excited, but look where we are in comparison to where it's been against BTC. So we're now at... Uh, 0 0.06 of a BTC and it's been as high as 0.12 so basically it could double its BTC value now in the dollar value it's still raging up at the moment but if it touches all old all-time highs and I'm not sure it will but it absolutely could it could basically double from where it is against its Bitcoin value now again that doesn't mean that uh, it goes to, because I think it's about 3800 now, that it's suddenly going about to go to $8,000 because it's based on where Bitcoin is at the moment. So that is very, very interesting. I, I wouldn't be piling into ETH at the moment. I am still worried that we're going to see a little bit of a pullback, but it's looking pretty good. And I mean, here you can see it against its USD value. So yeah, 3800 and sort of 80 ish dollars thereabouts i think it's going to crack that 400 fairly shortly sorry it's going to crack that 4000 shortly so eth doing quite well just i think i think the pullback against bitcoin is going to be eth is going to top out and bitcoin is going to go on a run not so much that ethereum uh you know has this big massive correction and falls off i think ethereum just kind of gets to a peak and then Bitcoin gets ready and goes on a run. And that's where it starts to lose some of its value against Bitcoin. So I think it'll start to come back sort of, you know, down somewhere around about here in its Bitcoin value, not its dollar value. It doesn't lose uh, too much in its dollar value. It's just Bitcoin finally gets up and does another run. That's what I think. All right, the graph at the moment. This is looking so good. And again, this is something I'm dollar cost averaging into at the moment. Uh, love the graph, everything it's about. And again, this is against Bitcoin. It's just traveling sideways at the moment, traveling sideways. So it's kind of keeping up with Bitcoin. Now, once Bitcoin gets on a bit of a run, it will be dragged up in dollar value, but it probably won't do so well against Bitcoin. But again, that's only if Bitcoin gets on a run and altcoins don't run at the same time because that's how it usually plays out early later on in the cycle and i believe we're getting sort of you know towards the third and the fourth quarter of the cycle when bitcoin runs altcoins run at the same time based on history that's what's happened so that's what i think might happen this time that bitcoin will start to rise but these will sort of keep pace and even start start to outpace but at the moment all this sideways kind of movement against Bitcoin, this says to me that there's accumulation going on here. There's people selling it, but there's also people buying it. So this is something that I'm buying into currently as we speak. Synthetics Network Token. Likewise, I think it's kind of found its bottom and it's just starting to range sideways, keeping pace with Bitcoin at the moment. I think DeFi is going to go absolutely hectic 
uh, in the American summer, so the Australian winter. I think that's when things are really going to start to ramp up. I think you're going to see institutional money start to come in. There is some there already, but I don't think the big institutional money has even really sort of touched DeFi yet. It's just, you know, what again, what they would consider those sort of, you know, early adopters and things like that. So for me, synthetics is something that I am starting to buy, and it's been ranging around that kind of 17 18 dollar mark for such a long time now and it just this stuff never lasts too long before it makes its next leg up and that's what i think synthetics is getting ready to do right bitcoin here we go so at the moment it has actually used the 50 day moving average as support and it's above now we've still got a couple of hours left now like only about an hour and a half left of the day but it is looking like bitcoin is now back above the 50 day moving average and like it's going to hold it for now. But what we need to remember is that sad day over in the States, so Sunday could quickly flip this round and then we go back below the 50 day moving average. That's probably what I think will happen. It's good that it's using it as support now, but I would say there's likely been a CME gap caused uh, over the weekend. So I think that will be corrected come Monday morning. So I think you see uh, sorry, Sunday morning, Monday morning here in Australia. I think you will see that uh, corrected. So that's really what I'm looking for. I think Bitcoin goes back under sort of 57,000. Uh, Monday morning, American time, 56,000 thereabouts. All right, moving on. So some stories that I found very, very interesting. All right, we were just talking about meat bits the other day. So there's an exploit in Lava Lab meat bits NFTs. Uh, and it's making it so you can go and choose the rare uh, NFTs that you want. So the meat, bits con the meat Bits contract by Lava Labs, so they're the creator of the CryptoPunks, has a hidden exploit and it allows people to basically select the rarity of their meat bit. So the better way to say it is you can go and choose the meat bit you want. You can choose the most rarest one and that's not the way they wanted to have it. It was supposed to be kind of a... Uh, you know, depending on how much you pay in next cab off rank and things like that. But now there is a, a exploit in it that you can go and, you know, pick out the most rarest one. And that's not how they wanted it. So it says down here, an exploit in the meat bits contract allows people to choose the meat bit they want to mint. Thus, they can select rare ones which are worth obscene amounts of money. The exploit is still currently live, or at least it was when this article came out, and several people are running contracts in an attempt to squeeze out the few remaining rare meat bits. So there's ones that are kind of really rare, and there's ones that aren't as rare, and it seems like that is the exploit at the moment. I mean, it's not like anyone's losing money or anything, so it's not that kind of exploit, but I... I guess it means, you know, the people with a bit of smart and a bit of nous uh, have been able to work this out and pick out, you know, all the really good ones, most likely. And so just the NFTs that are left. Uh, and I'm not going to say they're not rare and not worth anything, but, you know, they're the, the kind of more generic ones. Now, speaking of the NFT space. So Nifty Gateway co-founder says NFT speculation will end badly. And again, this this is what I'm worried about as well. Not all NFTs, there are some good ones out there, but look, a lot of them are literally, they're just collectibles, and as long as you're happy for uh, it to be a sentimental value more than a money-gaining value, then you'll be fine. He says here, NFT craze cooling off is good for NFTs, I agree. The end of speculation is a good thing, says the CEO founder of Nifty Gateway. If you do it, and this is, I completely agree with what he's saying here about NFTs. If you're doing it uh, with the sole purpose of making money, then you're probably not going to have a good time. And you're probably not going to make much money either, which is which is kind of the ultimate irony. Because people are piling into NFTs, you know, thinking that they're all going to make these huge amounts of money. They're not. Most of them are going to be like basketball cards, you know, back in the day and baseball cards and rugby league cards and all that kind of stuff. I think more basketball cards because they're the ones that I was really into when I was young. 99% of them aren't worth anything these days. But there are a couple that are actually worth some money, a couple of, you know, rare ones. And it's going to be the same with the NFTs. Most of them, they're just, you know, again, are collectible. And if you're holding them for sentimental value, great. Anything outside of that, you're probably not going to make money. You're probably going to lose money. 
right. Institutional investors have bought another $620 million worth of Bitcoin. And I get the feeling like Bitcoin's getting ready to wake up and make a move. While miners refuse to sell their coins, is the asset preparing for liftoff? I think it is. I think we've been, you know, kind of ranging for such a long time since back in February. I think, again, you know, the miners are aware now. They're like, all right, you know, there's enough buying pressure to sustain this. So why would we continue to sell? Why wouldn't we start to, you know, hold back a few more? And there's obviously enough demand in the market to push this higher. And I do think that is what's coming. Again, we go back to Bitcoin. This is it. You know, you could almost say we've been ranging since the 8th of February, but I kind of like to take it from about here. 21st of February, we hit that peak, came down, range back up, came down, range back up, came down, range back up, came down. And it's just sideways action for months now. This is not what a peak, uh, you know, like the peak of the market looks like. The peak of the market is it just kind of hammers off really quick, fakes out everyone thinks that it's coming back and then drops even lower. This is ranging sideways. This is a base being built. I think Bitcoin is getting ready to go off and I don't think we're going to be too far away from it. I really do think it kind of happens in the next couple of weeks that Bitcoin finally breaks above 64000 and I think we start to get up around that kind of eighty. Uh, $85,000, $90,000 mark. Again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. All right. So cryptocurrencies, again, the, the legitimacy of them, it's still happening. So now the well-known Phillips Auction House has announced the company plans to accept cryptocurrency for the first time in a physical art auction set for June 7th and 8th. Phillips will be auctioning a world-famous piece of artwork called the Laugh Now panel created by the anonymous street artist Banksy. Now, he has to be all right with uh, accepting cryptos, and I think he's got another piece of art uh, being sold somewhere else, and he was happy to uh, accept cryptocurrencies as well. So I, I can't remember. I think it was you know one of the really big art houses over in Europe. Uh, he had a piece that was being sold over there and, again, was happy to accept cryptocurrencies. Uh, you know, whether he holds them long term or, you know, cashes in half of it, I'm not exactly sure what he's going to do. But this is just showing that cryptocurrencies is legitimate. It's not going to be banned. You know, all that kind of FUD that's out there, it's going to be banned and this is going to happen and that is going to happen. Negative. <laughs> People all over the world are starting to use cryptocurrencies. Big, massive firms are buying it. Why would they then go and ban it? That just makes no sense. That is absolute rubbish and FUD. And again, people trying to keep the prices down low so they can get in and buy them at lower prices before they start to sing the praises of crypto and say, this is the future, uh, you know, all the rest of it. Is more regulation coming? Yes. Are they going to, you know, regulate the absolute backside out of it and stifle it? No, I don't think they will. And the reason I don't think they will is because of the, you know, kind of, drastic situation our whole financial industry is in at the moment to completely stifle it you know takes away any innovation and all the rest of it and unfortunately the new financial system does need to innovate its way out of all of this the system we have is broken has it worked for a long time really 2008 was the you know wake up moment for people that you know this system uh, is broke and unfortunately everything they've done since hasn't fixed it and you know this mass printing that they're doing now is just the icing on the cake that that system is broke doesn't work and this is the new financial future but again never financial advice that's just my personal opinion all right binance us so brian brooks uh, you know if you don't know i brought this uh, to people's attention a little while ago he's now uh heading up us uh binance so he's the ceo of binance us and look, his plan at the moment is to expand, expand, expand. So it says here, Binance US CEO Brian Brooks says the company will 5x its headcount over the next 18 months. Look, he's a very, very smart man and he can see what's coming. And so he is building uh, in preparation for what he sees coming. Now, again, I don't want you to think that that doesn't mean we can't have a bear market within the next 18 months. We absolutely could. I don't know whether it's coming or not. That super cycle thing's still kind of in play. But even with a bear market, the bear market actually doesn't last that long. The bear market is usually a year from the peak to the bottom. I'm not saying that doesn't mean prices get back up above 
the old peak for another few years, you know, usually about sort of three years or so. But from the peak to the bottom, it's usually about a year. So you just have to wait a year from the peak. Uh, and then if you're buying in a roundabout there, you've generally probably found the bottom and then you make those exponential gains. That's really where the big money is made. The, you know, the truly life-changing money is made in the bear market. It's not made in the bull market. So he says here, he also believes the exchange will continue to diversify. So now they're, you know, they've got those uh, tokenized kind of stocks on there and things like that. And I, yeah, I'm super bullish on Binance. I sold all my, all my BNB uh, quite some time ago and, and I'm kicking myself that I did that. I wish I had kept it, but look, you know, I made a lot of profit on it. I can't complain, but I really do wish I had have kept it, but that's life. And it says down here, I think it's pretty clear that Binance is the fastest growing exchange in the United States. And it'll be interesting to see how it compares worldwide. I think, you know, smaller exchanges are likely growing faster because they're so small and they don't already have those massive uh, kind of bases. It's harder for really big companies to grow exponentially. The smaller ones generally do that. But I still think Binance would possibly up there, be up there with one of the fastest growing exchanges in the world. All right, last but not least, and a bit of a sour note to kind of close on, but another hack. So Rary, Rary Capital falls victim to an $11 million exploit. And this is the problem with, you know, these new projects that come out. They just haven't stood the test of time. Please, please, please don't chuck all your money into some new hot thing thinking that, you know, this is the way to make millions of dollars. Can it happen? Sure, but I guess it really comes down to are you going to be able to get in cheap enough and early enough and get out, you know, not late enough because that means you are late, but also early enough before something bad like this happens. So after an $11 million attack earlier today, Rary Capital is the latest decentralized finance protocol to fall victim to a high-priced exploit. The platform which builds optimized yield vaults and boutique lending pools confirmed the attack in a tweet and said that a full post-mortem is forthcoming. Per white hat hacker uh, Milanio Bonassi, the exploit appears to be an evil contract exploit in which an attacker tricks a contract into thinking a hostile contract should have access or permission. Alpha Finance announced in a tweet that the hack was related to Rary's interest-bearing IB uh, ETH vault, but not Alpha, but no Alpha funds were at risk. I don't know how many of these exploits happens now. Look, Rary, Rary's been out for a while. It's not exactly like super new, but it's just taken hackers' time to kind of, you know, find the exploits and that. And again, someone out there, well, not someone, a whole stack of people have now lost a whole stack of money. And I'm just, I'm, I'm really hopeful that no one has lost everything in this because that is really, that's bad investing when you put everything into just one single little thing. You know, you can put everything into one kind of space if you want, you know, if you really believe in the space. And even some people will tell you that's extremely dangerous. But to put it into one thing, like to grab all your money and simply sink it into something like Facebook, look, in hindsight, Back in the early days, if you got had a, got into Facebook and you put everything in there, awesome. You would have you know made so much money. It's not funny. You'd be one of the richest people in the world. But what happens if it was the opposite and Facebook had a failed? You know, you had to put all your money into MySpace or something like that. You know what I mean? Like that. Just it's super dangerous and really, really ill advised to put all your money into one single thing. Unless you're backing yourself, you know what I mean? Like it's your project, you're building it, you know what I mean? A lot of people do that, but it's still super risky. And, you know, the smarter way is to diversify at least a little bit. You know, if you're going to put all your money like just into the crypto space, uh, you know, again, and I'm not recommending you do it, but, you know, that's that's something that's more legitimized because Bitcoin's now real. It, it's here to stay. It's very unlikely it's not going to go away. So as long as you, you know, if you just went all crypto, then so be it. But, you know, make sure you're putting it into some smart things and not just picking, you know, random lucky winners, you know, like you're at the casino trying to gamble. That stuff is really, really dangerous. All right, that's it from me. So like I said, a couple of coins that I'm looking at, Secret Network, 
I think has massive upside. Uh, it looks really, really good. The graph, I think, is looking... <laughs> I mean, this is such a good base form at the moment. It looks really good. This is what I'm getting into. And SNX. Look, I still think there could be some more volatility with SNX, and I'm not saying we couldn't go down more against BTC. I think its dollar value is going to hold where it is. It's been around that kind of $17, $18 value for quite some time. What I think is Bitcoin's probably going to get on a run, and this is where synthetic network, excuse me, could possibly lose more value against Bitcoin because this is all against Bitcoin that we're looking at the moment. But if it's now going to play out like it did in 2017, when Bitcoin runs, the altcoins still kind of run with it. So that's only if history is to repeat. But either way, I think DeFi in general is getting set up for a massive run in the Australian winter, uh, the US summer. I think, again, prices are going to explode and we're going to see... Uh, again, it's hard to know exactly what price, but I would not be surprised if by the end of this bull run, we saw Synthetics Network at 100 to $200, possibly even more. But again, please don't take that as financial advice. I have no way of you know, guaranteeing that that happens and I'll never provide you guarantees. I'm just saying I think the institutional money is still yet to come to DeFi and they are likely going to get on board and push it really high. And then the retail FOMO comes. Like again, I think I heard someone saying before, we're still only at about 1% of the total world's population that's using crypto. I thought it might have been a little bit higher. I know it was around 2% in late 2017, but that was, I guess, at the peak. So we're not there yet. So 1% of the world using crypto at the moment. And again, wait till, you know, crypto is predominantly finance so it's money sort of based i'm not saying it has no other use cases it absolutely does i like things like v chain you know supply chains and things like that and you know uh, nfts and all the rest of it love all of that stuff but finance is the core of cryptocurrencies and i think DeFi is going to revolutionize the world and make the people who were lucky enough to get in on the good projects unbelievably wealthy but again, that's not financial advice. That's a personal opinion of someone who's been in the space for a little while. All right, let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think DeFi still has another leg to go, uh, you know, possibly in the American summer? I think it does. I think not only does it have a really big run in the summer, I think it has a really big run towards the end of this, this year as well. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on the gain train at the moment because everything's looking pretty good. Watch out for that Sunday retracement. I don't think it'll be horrendous, but I definitely think I see one coming. And I'll see you next time.